Hey guys, today we are talking about propagating Camellia japonica, and I have about a half a dozen of them in my front walkway, but I want them all over the yard. I like to have probably, I would love to have 50 or more just planted throughout the two acres, but uh, what we want to do today is we're going to take cuttings, and I'm going to show you some various ways and various methods to propagate and what type of propagation media to use. So I'll start by taking these cuttings. I'm gonna cuttings, I'm gonna bring in a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay guys, what we're looking was we want to take this year's growth. And as you can see, it's, it's been raining today, so it's kind of hard to tell, but if these were perfectly dry, they would be kind of a rust color. And so I think you can see this one a little better. So it's kind of a rust color. This is all this year's growth, and the reason I know that is I come in uh, before, long before flowers, usually at the end of summer, and I take my hedge pruners and cut them down to a very manageable size where they don't grow out of proportion to the plants around them because these are all kind of a compact growing area. So what we want to do is we want to go down to the base of this new growth and see exactly where it started. Now you can see there's a change. I'll, I'll cut it and then bring it into the camera. I'll cut well below it. So let's see if we can get that to focus. So the let me take a couple of leaves off here so you can see what's happening. Okay, so right at the base there is an older year's growth, or last year's growth. As we go up the stem, we can see that it's more of a rust color. That's this year's growth. And so that's a good cutting. We're going to take that. And I'm going to take maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 cuttings today, but in the future I'm going to take quite a bit more before it, we get out of prime uh, propagation season. So this is going to be the beginning of hopefully a lot of new camellia bushes. So I'm going to back off so you can see what I'm doing. All right, And I'm just going to continue looking for this year's growth where it's meeting last year's old wood. And I'm just going to take cuttings so I can work with that. So we've got four here. I'm going to take quite a few more and these normally would get quite a bit larger this tree is only about five feet tall maybe close to six but the reason it's not taller is I've kept it small and that's because I just want it to maintain its shape and size in this garden also another th great thing about pruning these is it becomes very thick with leaves normally it'd be more leggy you'd be able to see through it it'd look a little bit more like a tree but this way because I keep this Japanese camellia pruned, it looks more like a shrub, maybe something like a gardenia or an azalea. So that really helps if you want that look in your camellias. So we're gonna keep cutting here and just make sure we have enough so I don't have to come back once I get to the greenhouse. All right, so before moving on to the greenhouse, I wanna show you one thing. Out of the six, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, out of the six camellias I have out here, this one is producing a lot of buds and they're ready to flower so i'm not taking any cuttings from this because i want to find cuttings where there's no buds forming even though it's only the end of august this one looks like it's going to be loaded with flowers this following november and december so i want to just leave this one alone and i'm going to take the cuttings from the others that are not showing any signs of buds and it also will increase the likelihood of the cuttings succeeding. So I'm avoiding this plant altogether and taking my cuttings from the other five. So I'm back in the greenhouse and I want to show you something specifically about these cuttings that um, that you'll want to look for. Camellias can have issues with disease and you're going to want to look carefully at the leaves before you take the cuttings and make sure there's no issues. Uh, nothing that looks like a spider web from underneath or any spots on the leaves. You want the leaves to be as healthy as possible so your cuttings have the best chance of rooting and producing new plants. So I'm going to bring it in closer so you can take a look at how healthy these camellia leaves really are. These leaves really are healthy. There's no disease I can see anywhere on there, no discoloration, nothing on the underside. There's not even, even any signs of insect infestation. So these are the perfect cuttings. So those are some issues you may want to look for. I found a perfect example. I'll have to dig through it, but I found a perfect example of where the previous year's growth meets the current year's growth. So I'll show you that as we're working, but these are really healthy looking. They are under irrigation and I used to do my irrigation. I have a, a, installed my own irrigation system close to 20 years ago and it was a massive amount of work, but I discovered something important about irrigation and I'll show you 
what I think if you do decide to do, to do a home irrigation project or you're having it done, I'll show you one thing that's extremely important. Okay, talking about watering and why these, why I believe these camellias are so healthy is they are watered, but they were once watered with this type of sprayer, which was a just a broad sprayer that would spray over a large area, used quite a bit of water, and it worked okay. But of course, the, you know, when you overspray it in the evening, the leaves are still wet, then you wake up and you're going to start having diseases. So I switched out from this type. Now, generally, I had nine zones per timer. I have three timers, so I would actually had 27 zones throughout the two acres. Now, not all of the two acres are uh, irrigated, but the areas will have lots of things planted are. So just not to go too long on this, I switched everything over to micro irrigation where I have really plants that I want, really want to preserve, like my camellias, azaleas, hydrangeas. And so these micro irrigations on one of these, I can put in a controller that nine of these going to individual plants, I can have nine plants being watered directly at the root. So that's why these camellias, I believe, are so healthy. They're receiving a daily watering of anywhere from one to two minutes, just once a day. If it's extreme, extremely hot and dry, I might switch it to two times a day, which is only two minutes, maybe two to three minutes. So I think that is the key to keeping your plants healthy is switching. If you have an irrigation system, switch to micro irrigation because I just feel like it works better. So but getting back to the camellias, we'll do that now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I sterilize my pruners. And I've already done that once today, but I just want to demonstrate it based upon a product that I really like using. I mentioned it in other videos, but this is just Listerine or the generic form of it from the local dollar store. I usually just put a little bit on the ends and make sure anywhere that it's going to be doing the type of surgery we're doing, make sure that these are sterilized. Also, I'm going to be using a razor blade, so I'm going to do the same thing with that. And so if you don't do this and your cuttings fail, you may never really know what happened because there could have been a disease that was transferred from a, another plant, another cutting you had taken. And so you really wouldn't know. You'd think, well, maybe it was the humidity. Maybe it was the heat. Maybe it wasn't enough water. So this is just one thing that you should always do to make sure that you don't have a failed propagation attempt. So it's just one more way to ensure your success. So I'm going to move on to the first set of cutting. And that's our first one. It looks really healthy. Looks great. The leaves, no, nothing discolored. No insects. They're all very happy and green. So we're going to do that. All right. So we have our cutting here. And I'm going to take it. We have probably too many leaf nodes here. Maybe this was a little bit longer than I needed, but I'm just going to cut it back to here. So we have leaf nodes, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to remove the lower leaf nodes. I'm just going to carefully pull each one off. I'm going to leave two at the top, leaving two at the top there. I'm going to cut these in half. Okay. So now we have cut in half. Now what we want to do is we want to scarify the base of the cutting to encourage root growth in that particular spot. So I'm just going to do about one inch. I'm going to remove the outer bark. So if you can see that I'm removing the outer bark down to where you see the green, that's the cadmium, about an inch, I would say. And so the next thing we're going to dip it in rooting hormone and I will show you what type of potting medium we're going to use as well. Okay. So the potting medium we're using is, one third, one third, and one third. One third vermiculite, one third perlite, and one third very finely ground pine bark, which at the big box store Lowe's, it is referred to as soil conditioner. I'll show you that first so you can get an idea. I filled it up in this jug based upon this little system I like using. So it makes it a lot easier to store it. And I always like to label. I haven't labeled this one yet because it's a new, new jug, but I'm gonna do one third, one third, and one third. All right, that's our finely shredded pine bark. If you can see that, it is just uh, what they call soil conditioner. Next thing I'm gonna use is vermiculite, one third of that. And the last thing I'm gonna use 
The last third is going to be perlite. Okay, I'm going to mix all three together. The vermiculite retains water, the perlite repels it and allows the water to pass through, and the pine bark also allows some holding of water and it adds just a little bit of nutrition to the roots once they start forming. So I'm just going to mix this really well before I put it in the containers. We want to make sure we saturate this with water once we get them in the containers. But that's in the step further down. So I'm just making sure this is well mixed. Okay. Next thing we're going to do. Now the first, the first potting set I'm going to do is with this little mini greenhouse you can find on Amazon. It has six individual cups. The lower base of this allows water to be held inside. And then you'll have a humidity dome to go on top. I always tape it to make sure I seal in the humidity and the top doesn't come off because it's not a perfect seal. And that should really work. So we're going to do this first with the potting of the first cutting. Okay, we've prepped this cutting where it's ready to go in the potting soil. We've cut the top two. We left two leaves. Three leaves will be fine as well. We've cut just below the leaf node. You can have up to one inch, maybe a little bit beyond that inch and a half into the medium. You don't want to go past one and a half inches. You just want to keep it probably closer to one inch. We've scarified the base of it to pr promote more root growth with our sterilized razor blade. So I'm just going to take a scoop of this potting medium and fill it close to the top. Pack it down a little bit so it'll be a little bit compressed. And we're going to dip it in our rooting hormone. We're going to swish it around in there to make sure it gets on it really well. You can also use a paintbrush. I do that quite often if I'm wanting to make sure that it's saturated, but I think it's okay just dipping it in there. You can also use a chopstick or some kind of thing to make sure that the rooting hormone doesn't get knocked off. You can kind of swirl it around there and carefully put it in there so it's not rubbing it off as it goes in. So that's our first cutting. We're going to place that into our tray and go on to the second cutting. Okay, same thing. You can tell this is this year's growth. It has that kind of rust color. And we're going to count down from the top about four leaf nodes, four sets. One, two, three, four. I'm going to cut right below that leaf node. I'm going to remove the lower leaves. Leave the top. In this case, I think I'm going to leave three leaves on there. But to prevent too much transpiration and loss of moisture on the cutting, I'm going to cut these by 50%. I'm going to take my razor blade, scarify the bottom one inch of the hydrangea cutting and in this case I guess we can use a paintbrush just to demonstrate it. Paint that on the bottom and the side where you took the scar where you made the scar. Take our new pot and press it down. Compact the soil just a little bit. Take our chopstick, make a little hole so it can fit in there easier. Carefully push it down. This soil is not very hard to get in there. So I don't think we're going to rub too much of the rooting hormone off. So that's our second one. I'm going to finish out the other four and then I'm going to go on to this. This is kind of an unusual idea I had based on some reading I did about the color red and plants. So if you'll, if you'll just stay tuned, I will put these in there and move on to this unusual idea I had. So I've got these inside of their humidity dome tray and I haven't watered yet, but I'm just going to demonstrate this is a perfect fit. I think they're going to do great on the top here. I hope I'm hoping you can see that you can adjust the humidity and airflow here. I'm going to completely cut off airflow because I want maximum hum humidity in here. Maybe at some point I'll come out maybe a week or two, let a little bit of air in there, press down here just to allow, allow some airflow in and out and then close it back up. It could take four to six months for these to make significant roots. So I'm just going to plan on this being an all winter thing. I will be gripping. I will be bringing this into the greenhouse probably in at the end of December, unless some extremely cold weather moves in. So that's what you want to consider is you don't want to leave these outside because if you're in a very cold climate, you're going to have a solid frozen root ball. And I just don't know if that would be good for the plant. I doubt it would survive. So I would, if you have an unheated basement, you could bring it in to an unheated basement. So that would be a great place. So let's move on to the next step. All right, we're going to water these. We're going to put them in a little spot here next to the hose. We're going to take our humidity dome off and we're going to carefully water these and try not to blast them out of their containers. 
All right, first of all, I'm going to give them a, just a light wash so they'll be saturated and then mist them quite a bit. We're going to switch over to mist. I highly recommend this Orbit sprayer. I've had it for two over two years now, and it is extremely well made. Um, I try to remember to put the link to the uh, Orbit spray on Amazon. All right, I'm going to check and make sure that we see there's enough water in there. And I think there is, there's about half an inch to one inch of water. And so we'll move on. We'll, we'll move these to their proper place, but then we'll move on to the next style of potting that I think is really unusual. I don't think very many people have thought of this. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna come back later and tape this on to make sure it doesn't come off. I'll just probably put two strips on each, one strip on each side, so we'll have two strips of tape, and that will prevent it from coming off in a heavy wind or put maybe an animal that might be around my propagation area. So we'll just take this over there and get it out of the way. Just to mention one more thing about the painter's tape I'm using, uh, it's made by 3M. There's some cheap painter's tapes out there that will not stick properly. And this is very sticky. And even after a rain, it will still stick to the plastic. Some of the cheap stuff will come off. So what I'm doing is I'm marking the date and what I'm actually put propagating in there. So nothing worse than doing hundreds of propagations and then you come out and the tape, the uh, painter's tapes have all fallen off. You have no idea what's what. You kind of have to look at the leaves and kind of guess as to when and what you were doing. So that's one thing. Make sure you get 3M really good sticky painter's tape. So we'll move on to the next step. This is the unusual idea that I'm doing and this is the, I've seen a lot of people do three cut systems when they're doing propagation. It's a great idea. It's, it works perfectly fine. But the reason I'm using transparent red cups is, is there's a lot of scientific data out there that says plants do better in red light. So what I'm doing is, is I'm taking the cutting, I'm taking the cup that the cutting is going to be sitting in, I'm taking my black cube pen. It's actually a uh, heats up and it does very well. It just goes right through plastic very quickly. You can see it made a hole. I'm going to put a hole on each side. You can get these on Amazon. But I'm leaving about a half an inch so water will be able to sit inside the black cube. It, you want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area because these do put off a smoke when you're doing this. So you've got your container. You're going to have your second cup as the area that will hold moisture. And so there's a small gap there, and it will push the water up. And so I might actually put some tape to prevent it from going all the way down so we'll have a one-inch gap there, so more water, maybe even more. And then the last piece I'm going to put on top like this, I'm going to tape it in with my painter's tape. So the plant is growing in complete red light. There's a lot of literature out there in the gardening world that talks about plants grow well in red light. Um, you can actually buy um, grow lights that will put out red light. So there's a lot of evidence out there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the painting cup. I'm going to put some soil in it or our 333 mix, one third perlite, one third vermiculite and one third pine bark. So that's our first part there. Then we're going to take our cutting. We're going to do the same as we did before. Just find this a little bit long. Let's try a little bit shorter. Okay. So I'm going to remove the bottom sets of leaves. I'm going to leave the top three leaves on. I'm going to cut those in half to prevent transpiration. And we're going to count down one, two, three, four. I'm going to cut below that fourth one at an angle. I'm going to put it in the rooting hormone. And unfortunately, I forgot to scarify, so I'm going to have to find my razor blade. The scarification is going to help roots form. So I'm going to do about one inch, maybe slightly more, put it into the rooting hormone, and then put it into our cup. Now, I haven't watered it yet, but I'm just going to do this for demonstration purposes. That's where it's going to be setting. We're going to put that on top. We're going to take some more of our extra sticky painter's tape that I was talking about. Take off a piece big enough so you can wrap it completely around and seal it in. Now you can always come back, take it off, let it air out for a day or so and give it some fresh air. But this will definitely 
not allow any of the humidity to escape because it is a sealed system now. So you have it growing in red light, which is proven to actually help. You'll have water down at the base here. You'll have the holes in the, the interior cup that will allow water in and out. The uh, potting medium we're using is very porous. So it will pull in water from the vermiculite and the uh, pine bark and the, the perlite will allow it to drain. So it's in a perfect system here. It's in its own special greenhouse with an unusual color light or that once it get, the sunlight goes through, it will be in a red form. So I think that's an unusual idea. It has worked for me before and it seems to help. So I'm just going to make sure that's sealed. Now you have to imagine I've already watered this and it's ready to move outside to the greenhouse. I'm going to do about eh, maybe two or three of these and put them out with the rest of the cuttings. Lastly, I want to use these recycle. I'm recycling these water jugs. I've cut it almost completely around, but I've left it still intact about two to three inches back here. I'm going to use these as their own greenhouse. So I'm going to carefully put more soil in there and try not to make a giant mess as I usually do. And this is the same potting mix that I was using on the, uh, the first two systems. One third perlite, one third vermiculite, and one third of the, as usual, I'm making a giant mess, uh, one third of the pine bark. So it's three, three, three. And so these jugs are perfect because you can come back, you can open this lid, and you can allow fresh air in and out. Um, it is clear, so you might be able to see some roots growing in the side. It's just easier to see what's happening. If you use a milk jug, you're not going to be able to see. Is it wilted? Is it dead? You know, what's going on inside? You'll never see it. You'll be hard pressed to see any roots growing along the side. So I'm going to take some more cuttings. I'm probably going to put four in here because it's such a large container and water it. Um, I might do a small hole about two inches up so there can be some drainage, but I really want this to be a sealed system for about three to four months. So there'll be a little bit of standing water at the base, but just to prevent it from going all the way to the top, if somehow water was to get in here, which I don't think it can with our tape, it would be, have a drain point at the side. So it would drain a little bit of water out. But anyways, the vermiculite will drain the water. The pine bark will hold the water in and the, excuse me, the perlite will drain the water. The vermiculite will hold the water in and as will the pine bark. So we've got it ready there. So we're going to take some more cuttings and we'll set up this system the same way we did the first two, just slightly larger and a little bit different. I believe I'm going to put four cutting, excuse me, I believe I'm going to put four cuttings in this one container. And so I'm going to remove the bottom four sets of leaves. I'm going to cut the top two leaves in half to prevent too much water loss there. We're going to take our razor blade. We're going to scar the bottom one inch as we've done on the first two sets. We're going to put it in our rooting powder here, which is Hormondin 3. I think I have a link in the description, or I will put a link in the description. I'm going to put our first one in there. And I want it to come all the way to almost all the way to the bottom. When you hit the bottom, come about half an inch and then press down because there could be standing water there. So we may not want it to be standing in water. We want it to be able to absorb the water through the potting medium. So we're going to do the same thing on this one. I'm not going to tape this just yet, but I'm going to carefully place this over. So we have our container here. We're going to tape around the sides. We have an air vent if we decide to. We don't have to worry about removing the tape. We have an air vent or if we want to add more water. So that is going to go outside right now and be watered and I'll be right back. Okay, this is the third type of container I like using for these cuttings and I'm just wiping the water off. Even though this tape is super sticky, I want to make sure it has the best possible chance of staying on. So I don't want water beneath the, below the tape. So I'm just going to go around the sides and make sure we have a sealed greenhouse all the way to where the cut marks are. And so for many years we were recycling these and throwing them away basically and not reusing them. I'm just sending them off to be recycled in the plastics. But now I found a definite use for them and my wife goes through probably two or three, three of these a week more than likely, I don't know. But anyways, we have a sealed greenhouse and the last thing I'm going to do, I am going to put a small drainage hole just in case, but I'm not going to do it at the bottom. I want it about an inch up. It's going to take a minute to heat this up. And like I said, this is black cube available on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put the link in it, but it's less than 10 bucks. So it's just a soldering pin. 
So I'm going to carefully put it right there. It doesn't quite heat it up yet. It usually takes just a few, like less than 60 seconds. So you can see it's starting to smoke there. It usually takes less than 60 seconds. Wow, it's being stubborn today. Okay, that should be hot enough. Let's try to get one more time. All right, it's melting. All right, there we go, success finally. So that's going to allow just a little bit of drainage just in case the water level was too high if I put too much water in there, and that'll save the cuttings from drowning. But I don't think I did. I was careful not to put too much. So that is the third type of container I use. Um, actually, my, my preference is the first one is the greenhouse because it's just easier for me. I don't have to do any type of preparation and it's just putting the top on it and putting a couple pieces of tape. Again, I need to label this as to the date and what it is. So I'm gonna do that right now. Today is August the 28th. And I'm just gonna put Camellia on there. And so we'll know about how long it takes to get the rootings in there. I'm guessing between four and six months before we start seeing good rooting, but by then it'll probably be sitting in the greenhouse protected from extreme cold. So that is type number three, and we're going to take that out to our propagation area. So that's well placed in the propagation area, but today's moment of Zen is about something that I, I love, and uh, maybe a lot of you love it too. But I think if I'm pointing to the right direction, it's that right there. And I'll move the camera so I can talk about it a little more. So I missed it by about a half an hour because I was working in the greenhouse. But what you're seeing there, kind of close to the center of the screen, is what I call a lithium dosage. And some people call it a sunset. It's a great way to calm yourself. And if you have time each day, watching a sunset can make quite a difference. It can calm you. Um, there was a song by the artist Sting, the musical artist, and he made a song called Lithium Sunset. And so it got me to thinking, this was many, many years ago. What does that mean exactly? And so I did a little research and it said that watching sunsets naturally produces lithium in the brain. And so lithium is a drug they give people who are uh, I guess you would say disturbed or psychotic and it's supposed to calm you down. So if you've ever watched sunsets or if that's one thing you love watching, that may be the reason why you're getting a dosage of lithium. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, to this last weekend was a very important milestone for my channel. It broke 100 subscribers and that sounds like a small number, but each one of those people represents somebody who was interested enough to, to subscribe to me, and that means a lot. So I'm not talking on camera. I just want you to be able to see what's left of the sunset. It was really, really beautiful earlier. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, um, it does mean a lot to me. And so for some, it would be just a small number. But to me, it's 100 people who are interested enough in what I have to say in the how-to channel, to how-to gardening channel, as to maybe pick up some new information. So I really appreciate each and every one of those subscribers. And if you would, if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you have a comment or you have a suggestion or I did something that you don't think is the right way, please let me know because I'm always willing to learn something new. So guys, have a great day. And it looks like the sun is gone. So I'm cutting off for the evening. Have a great evening.